Hello, welcome to the first of the Photoshop Basics range, um, conveniently colour coded to a Photoshop blue t shirt. These videos, um, dubbed Photoshop Basics, are slightly different to the ones where I just do general tu tutorials. And these are really aimed at people who are just starting to get into photography, just starting to use Photoshop. And so we're going to look at like the layout um, of where all the tools are and kind of what the, the basic ones do over the next few uh, videos. And also how to do uh, things in different ways and just kind of explain the logic behind doing them. So this is uh, lesson 1.0 and this is we're going to start with contrast basically. So we're going to be looking at how to boost the contrast of your photos because some of the first few ones that you take uh, can look a bit flat. Now to do this we're going to be using Photoshop CS5. Um, the technique however um, is as far as I'm aware is pretty much in all of the other previous editions of Photoshop. Um, it's certainly in Photoshop 2 and 3. Um, having never used Photoshop 1 um, I can't comment, I'll comment on that, but it definitely runs from CS2 to CS5.5. So let's run over to Photoshop, which is on desktop 3. Um, just a quick thing, because people might notice, um, I'm not back on Snow Leopard. Um, I'm still running Lion, as you can tell on my mission, mission control. Anyway, completely digression there. So this is Photoshop, we've got our photo here. Let's just bring this up and hide this. These are some lovely apartment blocks taken in China. So um, we're going to ignore the photograph um, completely for now. So let's just have a look at the layout of Photoshop. So on the left um, over here we have our tool palette and this is basically where you're going to find stuff and this is what you're going to be able to do stuff with. So this is how you're going to interact with your image. So for example you the the um, marquee tools for selecting areas um, lasso tools um, to select areas again, but more in different ways. Uh, anything with a slightly like um, arrow. If you press and hold your mouse, it brings up this whole other this whole other menu here. Um, quick selection of magic wands also very useful um, for just again selection. These are all main, main, mainly selection tools. Uh, the crop tool obviously is very self-explanatory, and um, the ruler tool is what I have on at the moment very useful for just like dropping down rulers so you can find like um, the the midpoint of your image and also um, in CS5 this is new if you want to straighten up your landscape you can just draw a line over the horizon click straighten and it will work out um, where, what's straight obviously this image is pretty straight anyway coming down we've got a bit more advanced tools stuff like a spot healing brush um, which is very useful if you're doing portraits you want to get rid of blemishes of the skin down here, a brush tool, again very useful for painting in colours and things like that clone stamp if you want to edit out specific areas um, with the uh, something that's really into it, for example if I wanted to change this bit of white here to pink I could do that by pressing down alt, selecting that and then I could just paint on um, the pink so that's what that does um, history, art brush and then art um, that affects what's going on in your history so I don't really use those tools so I don't really know too much about them to be honest eraser again self-explanatory erases parts of the image gradient tool um, there's a whole video about using gradient to affect skies and uh, things like that if you know what an ND filter or a graduation filter is it's kind of like that but a digital version um, so check out if you're interested in gradation check out the separate video I did on that then you've got stuff like blur and sharpen and smudging, self-explanatory. Dodge and burn um, are old darkroom techniques that have been brought into the digital world. So dodging is the lightening of an image and burning is darkening of an image. So you've got um, an overexposed sky, you can burn the sky uh, to make it darker. That's basically that. Pen tool is very useful, um, again, for making like selections and path selections. Um, which um, we'll come on to and not in this video because it, that's not a Photoshop basic uh, thing. Uh, text tool for typing. Um, oh, Photoshop is broken. Oh dear. No. There we go, it's back. Um, path selection for when you're selecting paths drawn by the pen tool and shapes. Um, and then various other things to do with the you can draw 3D and CS5, big whoop. You'd rather surely use a more dedicated system. Hand tool, um, 
moves the image around. Big whoop. Magnifying glass obviously is going to be the zoom tool. So that's the tool palette. Quick run down. Oh, down here you've got your color and um, your quick mask tool. So um, that's the tool palette. That's a quick rundown for the tools. Um, if you want to learn more about specific tools other than just their name and more specifically what they do, um, there's lots of Photoshop stuff on the internet. So you can probably Google pen tool to see what it does. Um, the You may have noticed, maybe not, uh, that this top bar up here changes depending on what tool you're on. So this is how you will control the tool that you are using. Um, very useful. Um, for example, if you're doing Magic Wand, you can change the tolerance up here, which is useful. Trust me, um, you may not know what the Magic Wand tool does yet, but changing the tolerance is very useful. So anyway, um, let's move over to the Adjustment pal Palette. <coughs> this is where you will actually physically adjust your image. Um, it can be done by going through image adjustments. Um, however, that's not my preferred method because, and I'll explain why, going to image adjustments, uh, and let's say I want to do a exposure adjustment. If I now change the exposure of the image by like lightening it or darkening it, um, that will affect the image itself. So it's going on to the background layer, which is in the layers palette over here, and that's actually going to affect the image. So if I press OK, that's going to actually go on to the photo, that's going on to our background layer. And I have once I've done that, other than um, undoing or going through the history, I have no way of changing that back. So what um, I prefer to do, and many other photographers prefer to do, is actually use these adjustment layers, which can be found in the adjustments palette. Um, so say I wanted to do an exposure um, adjustment again. Uh, I just click on exposure and that, as you'll see here, down in the layers palette, it brings in a whole new layer. So if I change the exposure now and say, oh, that's fine, that's how I want it, um, that hasn't actually affected the background because we can hide that. And look, the background is still the same. So we can go back and make edits later when we're happy with the image. To make it affect the background and to save it as a complete uh, JPEG, um, or whatever you'd like to save into, go to Layer and then Flatten Image, and that will completely compress it down and that will bring you to a one background image again, which I didn't want to do that. So let's undo that and get rid of my exposure. So that's the adjustment layer, uh, adjustment palette, layer selection things. My preferred method of doing things, other people prefer doing things like that as well. And down here we have the layers palette, which is again where you'll build up layers. Um, text appears as a separate layer, adjustments appear, as a, you can duplicate the background layer so you can have two of the same photos and then you can just affect um, one background. Up here we have the navigator which when you're zoomed in will help you navigate around your image and information about well, your document size, what the colour is, RGB and CMYK. Um, yeah, that's basically the layout. Um, if yours does look a little bit different to this, and I probably should have mentioned it at the beginning, um, I'm working on the photography um, layout. Um, there's many more. You can create a new one. Um, but since I'm a photographer and I work with photographs specifically, um, yeah, I use the photography layout. So let's know if we've found ourselves in Photoshop. We kind of know what we're doing. Uh, let's move on to lesson 1.0 which is contrast. So I've got this photo here and it's looking a little bit foggy, a little bit flat, there's not a lot going on and it's just a bit boring. And contrast is um, one way we can kind of pick up an image, you know, this, this image could be nice, we've got some good kind of repetition with the buildings here. Um, in the foreground and the background we've got a nice cityscape and so this kind of could be a really really good image but it's looking a bit flat and a bit boring and a bit of a nothing shot. And um, you can tell on your camera if you've got one of these by looking at the histogram. And the histogram is this thing up here. And it's a very, very useful, useful tool. Let's get rid of that. And the histogram basically 
um, shows you the um, content of your photo so you can judge an exposure um, by looking at the histogram. It runs um, from level 0 to 255, 0 is black, 255 is white, and that kind of shows you the levels of light that you have going on in your image. Um, so this, at the moment, um, this histogram here is um, very much in the middle. So there's a lot of midtones in here, which midtones are generally either greens or greys, colours like that, which is why our photograph looks a little bit flat and a little bit grey. And um, landscapes can often appear like this because green is very much a midtone colour. Um, so um, again, landscapes can kind of have this kind of problem if you're shooting in fields and things like that. Um, you can use the histogram on the camera to determine when you've got a good exposure and then adjust your camera settings accordingly or edit it in Photoshop. Now histograms can be useful if you're doing specific kinds of photography like high, light, high key lighting or low key lighting and that will determine whether you've got a good high key or low key image. Now um, high key lighting is where the image is very bright, very white, so for example snow, um, that's a very high key because it's very white and very light and the histograms for these kind of images will very much be shifted well over to the right. Now if you're doing that intentionally that's fine, that's good, um, if not you know you can um, I'll show you how to edit the histogram to bring more balance and contrast into it. Low-key uh, low images are obviously the very opposite, it's very dark, if you stuff, stuff like studio portraits can be very low-key to get very nice uh, highlights on the face and pick out certain points and again those histograms will be shifted well over to the left here because it's going to be very dark and most of the image is going to be underexposed. Um, so that's just kind of a very brief <laughs> overview of how the histogram works. Um, so let's go into um, levels. Now levels is what makes up the histogram um, so we presented with a histogram and that will affect our levels. Now we can see massive gaps here on the left and right, <coughs> excuse me, and that's where a lot of information is missing. Again, like I said, it's all in the midtones here, which is where we have a lot of information. So the histogram, when you're editing it in a levels adjustment, is made up of four things. It's made of a black point slider, which starts at zero, which is black, a white point slider, which starts at 255, which is white, a midtone slider, which starts at 1.00, and the histogram itself. Um, we can change the output layers here but we're going to ignore that for now and just concentrate on the histogram and editing the histogram itself. So um, correcting contrast by using the levels and the histogram is very very simple. We simply take the two sliders in to where we start getting information from the image. So for example we're going to take this black slider here and just slide it over to where we start getting information which is here and you can immediately see that's completely changed the image we suddenly have gone from a very flat photo like this to a very kind of the, it's been brought up it's been brought up and it looks so much better already and the same we're going to do the same with the white slider down here we're just going to bring this up to where we start getting information and that's there and let's move this out of the way so we can see the whole photo and we can see the photo is now starting to look a bit more respectable it's starting to have a bit of life brought into it um, compare this, which is very flat, very grey, very boring, to this. You know, we've started getting a bit more shadows now into it. The shadows here on this building have become more apparent. The colours are starting to be brought up a little bit more, and it's starting to look like an all-round great image. And we can adjust the contrast further by messing around with the mid-tone slider. If you drag it over to the left, you'll lose contrast. Uh, if you bring it over to the right, you'll gain more contrast, which is obviously that one's a little bit ridiculous. You want to kind of stay around the 1.0 mark which is where you're starting from. I never really stream much below 0 0.8 um, but that's that and you can see that's changed the um, the image drastically um, and that's basically all you need to do with a histogram in levels. You just need to bring it in to where you're starting to get information from and that will bring up the contrast. So that's uh, pretty much it for lesson 1.0 on contrast. Um, the next lesson, we're going to stick with contrast still, lesson 1.1, and that will be um, looking at the curves adjustment layer. So if you want to do a bit of homework, a bit of reading before the um, next video, and I'm going to try and pump these out every Friday. So every Friday, I'm going to bring out a Photoshop Basics video, and the next one will be about 
adjusting contrast in curves. So if you want to do a bit of pre-reading and a bit of homework on that, that's fine. If you want to do more reading on levels and the layout of Photoshop, that's fine too. Um, these videos are here to try and help you and make Photoshop easier to use. So thank you very much for watching and listening and I'm hoping that these videos are kind of making life easier for lots of people out there. Please subscribe to the channel um, if you'd like to get more regular updates sent to your subscription box. Um, we're also on Twitter and Facebook if you search for Josh Lewis Photog, that's all one word, we're on there. And yes, that's about it. So thank you very much for watching and listening and uh, thank you for your time and have fun in Photoshop.